Okay, so again, I'm going to show you how to do some basic renderings in Rhino. Um, this will be, there's kind of two different ways we can do this. There's the real-time render that'll show you a preview of the actual render in real time that we can toggle around and, and move. Um, the other thing we can do is to actually hit the render button. So this is going to render um, the scene. And when we say render, we just mean calculate the lighting and uh, materials and the interaction of all those scene elements. So lighting can be uh, point lights, it can be directional lights, spotlights, a sun, and light can also come from an HDRI image, which is a, it's like a, a image but mapped on a dome, and that dome is lighting and illuminating your scene. So if you want to do, for example, an outdoor scene and you want the light to be coming from the sun, but then some, you know, clouds and sky also to be kind of creating a bluish tone in the scene, that's what HDRIs are most uh, used for. You can also have studio lighting from an HDRI, and I'll, I'll show you some of that. But the render tools are under this tab here. Um, the first thing, you know, we're in shaded view now, but if you were to just go to rendered view, um, this is using the Rhino studio lighting. So what it's doing is it's creating uh, kind of an ambient occlusion rendering where the closer two surfaces get to each other, uh, the more shadow there is. So it's kind of an unrealistic scenario, right? Like, why is there just as much shade here as there is here? So if this were more of a realistic HDRI, then we would have uh, a little bit more realistic shadow in an image like this. So. To play with that, we can go to this Toggle Environments panel. And here, there's a number of settings. There's lighting, so we can set, we can add lights to the scene. There's the sun, so we can turn on the sun. Now you'll notice that there actually is a shadow here that we can play with. So if I set this to manual control, now I can control where that shadow actually is both in the uh, altitude and azimuth. All right, so where it is along the horizon and where it is uh, vertically too. Um, when you're setting up a scene, just as far as you know, render quality, you generally don't want to have the sun directly behind you, right? You'll, you're seeing what that's doing. When the sun is behind the camera, it just kind of, it's like washing out the image. It's like turning on the flash when you're taking a photo. So it's good to have shadows kind of moving towards you in, in some direction. Um, you can play with the angle, um, but you're seeing what that simple effect is doing just by changing the sun location and, and using manual control. Um, this is assuming that north is 90 degrees, so north is in the Y axis, but you can change that as well. Okay, you can turn on a ground plane so that there's this infinite plane at, at zero, or you can change the height. Um, so what that does is it allows the shadows to show up. And then under environments, what it's doing is it's, it's taking this uh, Rhino Studio uh, HDRI and then using that to light the image. So Here's, it uses these two geometries to show you kind of a preview of how the lighting scenario is going to react with this geometry, which is more solid, this geometry, which is more reflective. And um, there's different types of uh, backgrounds you can use. Like if you wanted to have just a color or a physical sky, we could do that. Um, that'll change the, the lighting scenario here. So, and again, it's, it's relying on this actual kind of rhino sky, and you can set the time. If you want to use the a rhino sun that you've created, you can do that. You can change the time of day. So that's updating. So that'll affect the scene here. Um, 
if we go back to high dynamic range texture or high dynamic range image. So what we can do here is actually assign it an HDRI. So these are HDRI images that I've downloaded uh, that are free online. You can click on one of these. I can upload some of these uh, for you guys to use. But what it's going to do is it's going to grab all of the, the lighting from that image and then use that to influence my scene. So you're seeing this HDRI kind of as a preview, and then you'll see how that it's, it's coloring the actual geometry with this kind of hue here. So you can see it three-dimensionally. This is an HDRI. It's kind of a, a dome image. Um, it's not just a flat you know, two-dimensional image. It has three-dimensional quality. So we can actually rotate the, um, the HDRI image based on uh, where we want the, the shadows to be in our object. One thing I'm going to do right now, the default material is set to white, and you're seeing it's very washed out. So I'm just going to change this material there's a material uh, column here. So just click on that. You can change the material type here. You want you know, one of the presets like plastic. Um, you can change that. And we can change reflectivity. That's already up. We can set the color. So instead of white, um, we can use maybe a gray so that these objects show up a little better. And again, I can I can play with this um, HDRI, so I can um, change the image if I want a different one. This is a construction yard. Take a second to load. And you know, maybe if your graphics are more cartoon-like and you're okay with this render quality, maybe this is the kind of image you want to go with. You don't have to spend a lot of time uh, perfecting this. You can make your, you know, your graphics and your boards more about the architecture than about the render style. I think that's always a good approach to take is that you want the, the project to be about the architecture and not about all the graphics in the project. Okay, so this is a construction yard still loading here you're going to see that it's going to go for more of a pink, which was kind of the sunset or dusk uh, scene in that last HDRI to more of a, looks like kind of more of a gray, um, soft um, shadow uh, scene here in a second. Okay, so you're seeing it's grabbing not only the lighting from that scene, but you're, you can actually see the reflections in this reflective surface are now coming from that scene as well. So right now the background is set to a solid color. So if we say switch to the actual background, then now we're, we're seeing the HDRI in the background of our scene. So again, it's this kind of three-dimensional um, image that gets mapped onto the horizon. So, you know, ideally there would be an HDRI of our site. Maybe you can find something like that for Huntington Beach, or you could just find a beach scene. Again, and that's if you're looking for something hyper-realistic. Um, if you just go online and search free HDRI, image, there's a number of uh, ones that I, so I think I've gone to this one before, Polyhaven. So they have HDRIs. Um, if you want to pay for one, you can. Um, but I think they have free HDRIs here. So let's take a look. So you can see these. 
you can download it 4K or 8K. So I'm just going to download this. I have a folder where I save these. So Cape Hill. All right, so then I can go back into Rhino, find that HDRI that I just downloaded. It'll take a second to load, but this is a pretty nice image. What, what the software does is it takes the brightest point in your HDRI and it uses that as the sun location. So it's going to take that and use it to create your shadow direction and all of your lighting. So as you rotate the HDRI, the shadow location for this is also going to rotate. So depending on the orientation of your HDRI, it'll have different effect on your scene. So this is taking a second to load. You can affect the, the brightness, you know, by affecting this gamma as well. So there, there's ways that you can affect it if it's too bright or too dark. Sometimes the you have to play with that a little bit. So it's still loading here. Okay, so now we have the new HDRI loaded. And again, We go into display options under rendered we can see all of the different um, settings that we have so you can tell um, what background to use so before a solid color was selected so now like let's say we want to use a solid color just have it be white so now our our background of our rendering is white even though the reflections are still being taken from our uh, HDRI image. So again to get there we're going to right click over here, go down to display options, and you can change how you, how you want your background to show up. So if you set it to use render settings it'll go back to the HDRI image. Um, you could even set flat shading. Um, we can say show ISO curves if you want to see the actual ISO curves in the uh, in the render. We have curves turned on here so you know you could have line work that shows up in this rendering if you like. So if you want to make it more maybe diagrammatic. There's ways you can do that. Um, you go to curve from objects. So I can So I can use this tool, Extract Wireframe. So let's say I want to see the actual edges of each of these. I want actual line work. I can go to Extract Wireframe. And so now you'll see that this rendering has more of a diagrammatic quality to it because the line work is actually showing up. So this could be a really nice, you know, more diagrammatic view. Again, to keep it even more diagrammatic, I can go to display options and I'll set the background to be white. And if I wanna delete or hide my ground plane here, it's still creating a shadow on the ground, um, but this could be a really compelling way to show 
you know, diagrams. And let's say I have the view that I want, but I want to change the, the lighting quality or the, the direction of the sun. I can still go over here and um, let's see. Yeah, I can change the actual lighting direction. So instead of same as input, I can, I can play with that as well. So I've changed this back to studio. So you can go, if you just scroll here, you can actually go back to any other HDRIs that you've had in the past. It'll load those up. So now we're back to this one. And again, if we don't like the reflectivity of this, we can change, we can modify the material so that I can bring the reflectivity of the plastic way down. You're seeing a preview of it. Clarity. So pretty simple way to create diagrams. And, and again, by using this uh, extract wireframe tool, you know, we're creating, we're creating the edges as well. So this is without edge. If I select it and type extract wireframe, now I have actual line work that's generated from that. Maybe I don't want to see the ISO curves here. I can delete those. But now I have kind of an edge. So it has a little bit more diagrammatic quality to it. I'm in perspective now. You can go into parallel if you want to export a, an axon. And so I highly recommend, you know, this is kind of a graphic strategy rather than going for realism. I think this can go a long way in your, your own graphics process.